Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. So in this video, we'll discuss the third problem of lead code weekly contest 345. It's a medium level problem. The accuracy is on the lower side and I get it. Why? Because probably um, most of the people might be getting TLE. I'll tell you why. Okay. So the problem name is maximum number of moves in a grid. So you are given a zero index M cross N grid. Okay. Consisting of positive integers. Now you can start at any cell in the first column of the matrix and traverse the grid in the following way. Okay. So from a cell row comma column, you can move to any cells, any of the cells, row minus one, column plus one, row, column plus one, or row plus one, column plus one. Meaning, if you're standing here, you have three possibilities. Go to the next column, one row above, in the same row, or one row below, okay? In the next column. These are the three steps. Either of the three steps you can perform, right? You have three possibilities. Such that the value of the cell you move to should be strictly bigger, bigger than the value of the current cell. So if this value is X, so you can, you can visit these three cells, but only if the value suppose here is Y. So Y should be greater than X simple. It should be strictly greater than the uh, current value of the cell where you are present. Okay. Return the maximum number of moves that you can perform. I would say a typical, a typical example of, uh, you know, a traversal of a, of a, of a grid, right? Uh, simple. So here you can see, this is my grid. I start from here. I can go here, right? This is one possibility. Now, can I go from here to here? No, because three is less than four. So what is the next option? I can go from here to here because nine is greater than four. Great. Can I go to five? No. Can I go to three? No. Can I go to 11? Yes. How many cells have I visited or rather how many moves uh, have I performed? One, two, three. Now let's see, can I perform uh, any further moves? So from five, I can go through four, but no, four is less, four is less, four is less. Nothing can be done. From three, I can go to four. Yes, you, you perform one step, then you perform next step and you perform the next step. So again, you can perform three steps here also, right? You can perform three steps. Let me just erase it for clarity, okay? So in short, if you see the possibilities, the maximum number of steps that you can form, perform is three. Either this one or uh, this one or this one. Okay. Total number of steps that you can form, perform is this only. One, one possibility is from three, you can go to nine, nine to 13, 13 to 15. This is also an option, right? So these are the possibilities. And in every possibility, the maximum number of uh, uh, what do you call it steps that you're performing is three so three is your answer right let's see here so from three the 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 only options that i have is here i can't go here i can't go here because two and one are less from two i can go to two one and one again all the values are less or equal from one again so just see from if i start from any cell so you can start from any cell in the first column but all the three cells that are there you cannot perform even a single move so your answer is zero getting it so this is what the problem is asking us to do. It's totally based on implementation. Okay, totally based on implementation. The, um, <laughs> probably the uh, typical uh, problems that you get when you start these type of problems. Okay, so this is the uh, number of rows, number of columns, uh, right? Uh, these are the values and all uh, constraint. So what I'll do here, what I'll do here, I'll, I'll basically check for every possibility. I'll start from here. Okay, I'll perform a basic DFS. Okay, I'll start from here. I'll check for all the possibilities. I'll go here. I'll go here. I'll go here. Similarly, from here, I'll go here. I'll go here. I'll go here. Means at every position, I'll check all the three possibilities. If whether or not that's a valid move. Okay, now if that's a valid move, what I'll do? Some at some particular point of time, I'll stop. Like for example, I'm stopping here. So whatever is the answer here. Now what is the answer here? This says that if you visit this cell, okay. If you come at this, somehow you come to this cell, what are the steps that you can perform further? Like for example, where can you go? In short, suppose you are at nine. Now, how many steps can you perform? You can perform only one step. So what we will do, we'll memoize it. We'll, we'll store the value. We'll store the answer for nine. So that whenever we visit nine again from any other path, I already have the answer calculated for nine. I do not compute it again. Okay. So this will not give me TLE, right? This will not uh, make me traverse the same tree again and again. That's the optimization. So just see, you can, you can see it's a very small code. So just see, this is the grid that I have. This is the number of rows, number of columns. And this is the uh, array, DP array that I've taken to memoize it, to store the answer for every possible I and J so that I do not have to calculate it again. 
and I filled it with minus one so that it tells me whether or not I have visited this particular row or column or not. Okay, answer is initialized by zero. Now just see, I uh, for every row I pick the first column. I pick the first column for every row and I basically call the DFS. Whatever is the maximum answer I get, I basically return it. I return answer minus one because actually I've started from here, right? I've started from here. So instead of counting these steps, I'm counting the number of cells that I visited. So one, two, three, four. I visited four cells, but, that, but actually how many steps am I performing? I'm performing n minus one steps, rather three steps. So that is why I've added minus one here. Now let's see what this code is doing. DFS of i comma zero. So I pass a row and column that, okay, you start from here. If that is already calculated, you return it. Else what you will do? Answer equals to zero. Check for all the three possibilities that whether or not it's valid. So r minus one, column plus one. R column plus one, R plus one, column plus one. So check for this, check for this, check for this. What this valid function is doing. So if row number is not valid or column number is not valid or the next cell that you are visiting has a value less than or equal to the current value, then these are the conditions where that cells becomes invalid. So you return false, else you return true. So if this is valid, you call the DFS. Similarly, if this is valid, you call the DFS with the proper value, just see R minus one, C plus one, just see. R C plus one, R C plus one, R plus one, C plus one, so R plus one, C plus one. Okay. Now, whatever answer you get, you're just taking the max value. Just see, you are taking the max value because you cannot take all the three steps. Rather, you have to pick the one which is giving you the maximum answer, right? So, whatever is the maximum answer, increment plus one because I'm cal uh, add plus one because. I visited the current cell, right? So answer plus one. And finally, you store that in DP array so that next time you do not have to recompute it and finally return your answer. Okay. So yeah, just, just see, that's a very small code. And I would say that most of the people probably are getting TLE because of this step, right? You have to store the answer. Otherwise, you'll be computing the same values again and again, right? Uh, so yeah, that's it for this solution. Uh, let me know in case you have any queries related to the solution. Also, if you like the solution, support it by clicking the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for regular updates on the lead code contest videos. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.